Let's take a look at some strong side outside zone variations from the Shanahan McVay system. A lot of these are going to come from the 2023 Dolphins playbook that's available uh, in the link down below. And when we're thinking about strong side variations, that means they're going to be in the direction of a tight end or a three man surface. So we're starting with just base 18 and 19 out of 11 personnel. Now I call it 18 or 19 stretch because my players are gonna be used to hearing something after the 18 or 19 call. I don't wanna just leave them with 18 or 19 and then they're thinking, well, 18, 19, what? Uh, so 18, 19 stretch starts with an STR. So it kind of goes along with that strong side idea. Uh, and you can see that here, it is based out of 11 personnel. And you'll see why whenever we get to some of the other variations, the word that comes after 18, 19, that's really gonna dictate what the fullback does or some different things that maybe a tight end would do or the different combinations that the offensive line is gonna have. But here we have base 18, 19 or 18, 19 stretch. And this is a one back variation to a tight end side. You can see that on both sides. It is a regular mic declaration, meaning that the center is going to be working to the mic linebacker. The way that they ID the mic here is with two linebackers. There's a mic and a Sam, and the mic is the weaker of the two, Sam obviously being the strong. So the center here is working to the mic, who's the backside linebacker. The Sam is going to be blocked by this triple combination. And that leaves the strong safety in the corner unblocked. Well, we want to block the strong safety. Ideally, we want to make the corner tackle if anybody is unaccounted for on the play side. And you can see that in this blue note here towards the bottom. Alert short versus unblockable safety support. So if he rotates down and we cannot account for him with the box, then we need to short motion the Z in to block him. And now the only unaccounted for defender on the play side is the corner. Shakes out similarly on the right side over here. It's out of a condensed formation. So now we don't have to motion the Z in because he's already tight. He's in that five yard split. You can see Sam is still going to be accounted for by the tight end and the tackles triple combination. Center is still working towards the backside linebacker. That's the mic. And then because nobody else is in the box, the backside guard and the backside tackle can man on and take care of the backside three and the five. So this is about as simple as it gets, 11 personnel, single back, outside zone, to a tight end side. And that's base 1819 or 1819 stretch, as I call it in my offense. So next up, we have 1819 support. And this is if you want to run it to a trips surface. Now, when we looked at 1819 stretch, it was to what most people consider a pro surface, meaning a tight end and a single receiver with twins on the backside. Well, here, we have trips. So this would be run when you want to account for the strong safety and the corner because we have that extra blocker on the front side with the F coming over to the strong side. So the slot receiver would take care of the strong safety. The outside receiver would take care of the corner and everything in the box is going to stay the same. Even as far as mic declaration, you can still see we have this triple call getting the tight end up to the mic linebacker should he scrape over. Even though they call him the plug linebacker, the center is still working to the second linebacker in the box. So we don't need any adjustments to the declaration there. And then the backside tackle is going to cut off the backside defensive end. The will is gonna be controlled by the boot of the quarterback. All right, so those are really the two primary 11 personnel versions as far as running it strong. You can either run it strong to a pro flank, which would be base 18, 19, you could run it strong to a trips flank, which would be 18 or 19 support. But here we get into 12 personnel. And when we start getting into 12 personnel out of this formation, we get a totally balanced formation, meaning everything is equal on both sides of the center. And the quarterback is going to have the ability to what they call Oscar the play, meaning flip the run play. We're going to run it to the other side. But as we can see here over on the left, we have a three man surface to one side of the formation, a three man surface to the other. And so the quarterback's going to walk up to the line and based on these two things, either do we have a bounce read for the running back in one direction or do we have an unblockable support player on the play side? The quarterback is ultimately going to be able to decide which way this play is going to be run. Now on the left here, the defense matches with a 3-4. So at least as far as the front seven goes, there's no bounce read, it's balanced. There's no reason for the quarterback to Oscar the play. The strong safety, the support player does come down, but he's not unblockable. 
the Z can still crack him here and the running back can still have the only person being unaccounted for as the corner. So ultimately, uh, this 18 on the left side here, it's going to fit up very similarly to the 11 personnel version. Maybe the F was detached and the wheel kind of apexed with him. But ultimately, from the play side over, it's exactly the same. We have our three-man surface. We have a single receiver out here, and it's going to fit up very similarly. Now, where the Oscar comes into play, as we can see over here on the right side, the original call was 19, which is meaning this play is going to go to the left but we have a bounce read. We have an edge defender that is head up or inside of the offenses and man on the line of scrimmage. So we have the expectation that we're gonna be able to reach this defender and the running back is going to get a bounce read as far as his reads go for where he should run the ball. And again, since this will is head up on the fullback, we have the expectation that we can get all the way around him, seal this edge and give the running back the whole perimeter to be able to work. We get the X cracking the free safety here, and we should get a one-on-one -on -one running back with a corner, and that is a matchup an offense will take 10 times out of 10. One more look at an Oscar possibility here. We've seen no need to Oscar. We just looked at Oscaring toward a bounce read. Here we're gonna Oscar away from an unblockable support player. So kind of like we just saw, the original play is 18. This play was supposed to go to the right as it was called, but we have an unblockable support player. There's nobody in the front that can block him. Now with our base 18 call, we would have had the Z short motion in and block him, but that's not the way this play was called. We have the ability to Oscar and run it the other way. So that is the quarterback's fail safe here in the event that we get an unblockable support player. So next up we have structure and structure is very similar to the base version except this is going to be done again with a balanced formation, meaning that everything is the same on both sides of the center. Kind of like Oscar, except here we don't have the ability to flip the play. And the reason for that is the mic declaration is a little bit different and structure is going to have more of a true zone idea, covered, uncovered, than 1819, whether it's Stretch or Oscar and some of the man integrity that both of those plays come with. So in both of those plays, the center has the Mike linebacker. Whether he has him solo, whether he's in combination up to him, he has the Mike linebacker. And they ID that depending on the front. They will have this person is the Mike linebacker, this person is not. So you can take a look at these two boxes and you can see that they will fit up very similarly against most fronts. Now these are two odd fronts and what we looked at with 1819, the base version were even fronts, but they fit up very similarly. But here you can see the difference between the two whenever we get to an even front and we get to the strong safety rolling down, we have a possible push call. And what a push call does is it pushes the count one defender to the play side. The count meaning the mic identification. Now we're going to treat this Sam like he is the mic, meaning that's who the center is going to account for and everybody else needs to adjust off of that. So who's the next play side defender that's off the ball? That would be the strong safety. That's where the triple combination is going to go. This backside C combination that is going to go to the original mic linebacker. And now we're going to leave the will untouched on the backside. Well, how does this change as opposed to regular 1819 or 1819 stretch? Well, for 1819 stretch, this triple combination was going to work to the Sam. The guard was still going to be solo on the three. They were going to work the nose to the mic, and then we would have been even on the backside. Remember that stretch is also going to be from 11 personnel without any of uh, any of these extra words behind it. So this wheel would have been detached, and this would have been six for six in the box. Strong safety rolls down, so the Z has to short motion in and account for him because on stretch or that base 1819, the center is working back to this player really no matter what. Now against a 3-4, that might be what they call the plug linebacker, but he is working to the backside inside linebacker. That's going to change how the front fits up. Here, he has the ability to work to the play side inside linebacker, and it's gonna change up angles. It's gonna change up the rest of the count and now there's no need for the Z to short motion in to account for him so he can take care of the corner because this triple combo is going to work to that strong safety. So ultimately, as far as I'm concerned, the difference between the two and when you would call either 
is based on who you want to leave unaccounted for. Do you want to leave the corner unaccounted for or the wheel backside? If you want to leave the wheel unaccounted for, then we can run structure and make sure that the corner gets blocked on the play side. If maybe this wheel is becoming a problem, chasing things down from the back side, then you can run regular stretch, have the Z come in to account for the strong safety, and then basically you're pulling the count back to regular and the wheel is gonna be taken care of, whether you have the fullback stay back side to seal or whether you go to a twin surface backside and the wheel is going to detach from the box anyway. But that's why I say that structure is more of a true zone because everybody is really accounting for their play side gap and the defender that's in it. If we were just to draw up regular gap fits, you know, the fullback is motioning this direction. So he's going to be right here and we can see the defense being really gapped out. Now, NFL defenses are going to play this differently than high school defenses. They're going to try and move gaps and twists and two gap and things like that. But essentially, they do have somebody for every gap. And if you look at how these combos are going to play out, generally, they go to the two people that you expect to be in those gaps based on pre-snap alignment. So whereas stretch or this base version of 1819 is more so the center is locking on that backside inside linebacker and everybody else has to adjust off of it, not really regarding for which zone is yours, more of a man integrity zone idea. I think structure is quite a bit more uh, of a true zone play. If you spend hours each week creating and updating wristbands to match your play call sheet, the automatic wristband play call sheet system is for you. All you have to do is fill out your call sheet as you game plan and the wristbands automatically fill in to match. Because the wristbands are linked to the play call sheet, you never have to comb through and make sure the wristbands match. With 9 formations and 16 plays per formation, you can be sure that you have enough in your game plan to defeat your opponent without so much that you can't practice at all. Whether you're in the off season and have time to adjust to a new call sheet, or you're in season and need more time to spend with family on the weekend or more time scouting your opponent, this automatic wristband play call sheet system is for you. You can find a full demonstration of this time-saving system in the link down below. All right, let's start diving into some two back strong side outside zone variations. So these are gonna be out of 21 personnel and we're starting with what might be my favorite version is 18 or 19 Mike. So here, this first front, we've got a three, four. So the center is gonna be working to the backside inside linebacker. Again, the fullback's got the play side when that's the Mike. And I really like how this works because what really should happen, tight end should be blocking the Sam out. You can see that right here, out the tackle is really gonna take this four really wherever he wants to go. And then the fullback has to kind of read this block and either go inside or outside based on how this block on the end goes. But that really should be it because the guard here gets to work backside with the center. We should really be exemplifying that idea for outside zone that we want to stretch the front side, cut off the backside and have a lane to run in between. I think you can really see that idea over here on the right side against this even front. Now they don't have a combination here. Whenever I'm teaching it, I have a combination. I want my guard getting really thick on this one or two eye. Again, really get that idea of sealing in the front right here. We've got a five technique. So now we're really focused on getting the tackle and the tight end out. And here is your lane. They've been stretched. This side has been walled in and the running back should end up hitting this right through the B gap, right behind the fullback's block ISO on that mic. And when it hits, it is a very nice play. Now, kind of the original two back run here, not in the Dolphins playbook, but this is in uh, the 21 49ers offense and basically any other outside zone offense from the Shanahan McVay tree. This is 18, 19 force. And just like Mike, this is saying that the fullback is going to be responsible for the force defender, the support player, and being a strong side run, that is going to be the strong safety. There's a lots of dashed lines here, so let's break it down. We've got Y short to I right book. That is the shift in the formation. So the tight end is shifting. He's going to be lined up here. Again, a strong side run. We've got a triple combination. So they're comboing up to the Sam. The offensive line and the tight end are going to block this exactly like they did base 1819 or 1819 stretch. All the same rules apply. The difference is because we have a fullback now to account for the strong safety, we don't need that short motion. So the Z can block the corner 
really wherever he goes because the fullback is going to block the strong safety. We don't need that short motion alerted because the fullback is going to take care of him. Guard is gonna be solo on the three here. Again, center working to the backside inside linebacker. Based on this front, that is who the mic would be, but he would be the ID point either way. And then here, the tackle's got somebody in the B gap, so he's going to take care of him. Will is going to have to be accounted for by the boot of the quarterback. Again, how he was accounted for originally was the fullback or the F being detached. So we've got twins, he's gonna be out over there. But now we have that the fullback and the tight end are working in the same direction. And the fullback is going to isolate the force defender, strong safety, wherever he finds him. So this is a really good variation for a team that doesn't do a lot of two back things because the offensive line, nothing changes for them. Like we just looked at Mike, well now they have to know that they don't account for that play side inside linebacker and that's going to change how they fit things up but here the offensive line is blocking everything the exact same way the only difference between this and a regular 18 19 call is that again we don't need that short motion for the z to account for the strong safety because the fullback is going to take care of him as long as the quarterback gives a good boot fake and holds that will everything is fine within the box now on the right side here we're going to see that it's basically 19 Mike, and that's because of this four call. Now I've yet to see on any of these playbooks a specific definition of a four call. But what I can notice from here is that if we were to divide a line down the center, we have four defenders on the strong side, we have four defenders on the weak side. So I would imagine that it has something to do with that. If somebody knows, let me know. But when there is a four call on force, the fullback is going to account for the Mike linebacker and it's gonna fit up very similarly. You can see we've got tackle and tight end blocking out, and then really the rest of the offensive line focused on sealing everything in. Another thing you'll note is that there is no force defender here, really. The force defender would probably be the Sam right here, and we'll look at another play for if they want the fullback to account for him. But this is an original strong side rotation. You can see the free safeties down over where the tight end originally lines up. Tight end motions to the left over here and the free safety doesn't travel all the way over with him. So they don't adjust to the new strong side and we get four defenders on both sides of the midline. Now, if the play caller wants the fullback to account for the Sam, then he would run Sammy. So just like Mike, just like Force, this is saying that the fullback is going to block the Sam. Everybody else adjusts off of it. And I've come to really like this variation in recent weeks, and I'll tell you why. So against odd fronts, instead of running structure, this is a really good variation to make sure we can stay seven for seven in the box. And then we still have our Z taking care of the strong safety corner, the only unaccounted for defender on the play side. And something else we can see here is the idea up top of triple until you can't. So as long as there is some defender over the tackle or the tight end, they want to triple, meaning a tackle tight end combination. So what I really like about this play is we really, really get this focus on sealing in the front all the way inside of really the D gap. Then you have your fullback responsible for really the first defender outside of that. You got your Z getting a good angle on the strong safety here. So it is really easy to get the edge on a Sammy call. And then again, we're one-on-one -on -one with the corner, with the, our running back, generally our best ball carrier at running back. Generally at the high school level, teams play kids at corner because they can kind of cover, but they can't tackle because if they could tackle, they'd play safety. So if we can get our generally best ball handler on a kid who can't tackle and nobody else unaccounted for, that is a win every time for the offense. So Sammy can present some problems against a strong side rotation. And that's why uh, we've got here that they would can it to toss weak. And we see that here. Uh, let's draw up if they wanted to run Sammy still. We'll kind of see why it can give some problems. So if we we're running 19 Sammy like the original play was, the fullback is going to have the Sam. There he is. Uh, this is one of those more man integrity plays. The center is going to be working his combo back to the plug linebacker. Backside tackle would have the defensive end. We would not be able to get a triple call based on this front. So that kind of is one of the problems there, but guard and tackle, play side guard and tackle would be working to the mic. And while yes, that does kind of give you your Y here who can block the strong safety, you have bodies for bodies 
but the angles aren't what they need to be. So against this front, they would be more likely to run a Zoro or Zelda out of this formation than Sammy if they wanted to continue running it strong. And the reason is, at least as far as I'm concerned, I'm not in their meetings or anything, but I wouldn't want the Sam squeezing down and the strong safety fitting off the edge over here before the tight end can actually get to him. So if the tight end, the tight end would have to release pretty vertically to avoid the Sam, which he would need to do because the fullback's gonna block him. So he would see the tight end vertical release. He could get outside over here uh, and he would be unblocked, unaccounted for, and make that play off the edge. So instead, they run toss weak, which is essentially Sammy just to the weak side. Now we have this idea of triple until you can't. This is still 18 Sammy here, but what do we do if there is no four to six technique? What happens here is the tight end is just gonna go straight through to the Sam and they're essentially gonna switch. Fullback is still taking on that outside edge defender and the offensive line still focused on really sealing in the front. We got some short motion alerted if we needed to, which we did because the strong safety rolled down. And now we still get running back one-on-one -on -one with the corner in an ideal world. Triple is kind of the 12 personnel version of Sammy. So we still have the idea that we want to triple until you can't, except now this block on the Sam is not coming from the backfield. It's coming from a 12 personnel formation here. We're in West, got a four man surface to the right side of the center, and we still want to triple as long as possible. So we're still, again, getting this idea of the front hopefully being sealed in outside of the tight end, and then we can really attack the edge. Fullback still has the Sam. Z still going to short motion in if he needs to, to block the strong safety. Still have the corner one-on-one -on -one in the ideal situation. Now, if you look at some of the older playbooks, you'll see Quattro. From my understanding, Sammy and Triple are kind of a split version of the two. So Triple being the four-man surface version, Sammy being the three-man surface and a fullback version, whereas Quattro could kind of beat either. Now, one of the things with this system is always having answers. It's so like we said here on the left side, the answer to some rotation would be alerted short motion. On the right side here, instead of short motion, we have a can call. So here they're anticipating the strong safety coming inside the box, rotating inside the box instead of outside of the box. So that's gonna be really hard for the Z to come in and take care of. So again, instead of that option, just going to can it and run weak. So next we have another four man surface version. This is zap. And this is different from triple in that instead of a triple until you can't, it's quad until you can't. A quad is going to be the tight end and wing working together. And they want to work in combination unless they can't. So this could be used against a different front, could be used if they want the play to hit a different way. And you can really see that over here on the right side. So here they're in east, tight end and fullback here are flipped. But against this very same front, when the strong safety rolled down, they had to can the play. That's partially because it didn't have the triple call. But here, they can quad up to the strong safety and the rest of the offensive line stays intact. Will unblocked, but he has to account for the quarterback on a boot. And next up we have Zorro. Zorro is probably my single favorite on paper version of outside zone much harder to teach and execute. But the idea for me on Zorro is that we really want to focus on sealing the front in inside the tackle, and then the fullback is going to come and clear the C gap on his way to the free safety, unless the outside linebacker twists and darts inside in which the fullback would pick him up, reach him, and then you've got your tight end up to the force defender and your receiver block in the corner. But as far as the offensive line goes, nothing changes for them. They're still blocking normal rules. Center's gonna work to the backside inside linebacker. Guard and tackle working to the play side inside linebacker. Backside tackle's got the defensive end and the quarterback has to control the backside outside linebacker with his boot. Uh, but this would kind of be used in similar situations as Sammy, except here they can't triple, right? Because we've got a four and a six or nine technique on the tight end and Specifically here, we have a rolled down free safety. So with Sammy, this would be a play that they would have needed to make an adjustment to. Well here, 
Again, the tackle is working back on the four, so they're really focused on creating that wall. And then we are really two for two on the edge right here. The tight end, because it's Zorro, he knows he's got fullback help inside. The fullback is going to take an inside track. He's going to combo with the tight end from the backfield. So knowing that he has that inside help from the fullback, the tight end, the Y, should be able to get very wide on this combo block. And he's got to force this will to make a decision. Am I going to stretch this play out and prevent getting reached like most high schoolers are probably taught to do? Or is he going to play inside? And with coming from the backfield, this fullback can read that. And what happens most of the time is the wheel is just kind of hanging on the Y, not really picking a gap, at least when you watch NFL film, not really picking a gap. Uh, he's just kind of trying to maintain. And what the fullback does then is he's going to hammer him. He's going to get inside. He's going to knock this wheel outside the tight end. The tight end is going to flip him and make that alley right there. And then the fullback is leading through on the free safety. Now, like I said, if the wheel pinches uh, and the free safety tries to stay outside, the tight end, if the wheel goes inside at all, the tight end is supposed to let him go and let the fullback reach him from the backfield. And then now the tight end would take care of the free safety because, again, it's a combination. There's two of them and two of us. You'll also see Zorro and Zap Cat. And instead of this combination working to the force defender, it's going to work to the corner. And I might like this play even better because now the receiver is going to go and crack this force defender. So we are really forcing this alley, knowing that the defenders all the way out here, the fullback really gets involved on this combo and they can really drive this will out to really create that alley there. Offensive line seals in the front and the X gets a good angle on that free safety, on that strong safety. The running lane is impossible to miss essentially for the running back. Generally, that would be used against more of a cover two team where the corner would be your force defender and the safety is staying high so that the receiver has time to get there. Here against a middle field close defense or even against quarters, if this free safety is going to be fast to fit, then regular Zorro would be the call. Now going along with Zorro is Zelda. And this is going to present exactly the same way except the mic declaration is altered. So this is going to be will declared as opposed to mic declared. But essentially what's going to happen here is just like we talked about earlier with stretch and structure, we are trading blocking the corner for blocking the will. So now instead of this tight end and fullback combination going to the force defender, it's going inside to the play side inside linebacker. The Z has to have short motion here to take care of the strong safety corner is unaccounted for but we are more secure in the box and and i actually broke a zelda play down i think it was in my week one explosives that i send out every week uh, on substack and one of the reasons that i think it was used is because uh, there was a twist so the sam was coming inside the end was coming inside and this mike linebacker was flowing over and so if it was a zoro call then the angles just would not have worked out for one of these interior linemen to get up to the mic before he scrapes over. And so he would have made the tackle clean. So again, Zelda, the count is being pulled back. It's Will declared instead of Mike declared. And so we are more secure. We are staying seven for seven in the box. So whenever uh, we saw that play and the mic scraped over, well, the fullback just hammered the Sam over outside the Y and picked up the mic. Z had come in to count for the strong safety. Running back just hit the crease and made the corner miss, and it went for 15, 16 yards. So Hornet is kind of a newer development as far as seeing it in the playbooks go, and it's one of those things that it's kind of a combination of a lot of things that instead of listing off you know, 12, 13, 14 word play calls, it's kind of condensed down. So Hornet at its base form is going to have a balanced formation, and you can even see it on the right side here. The formation is going to balance up with some fly motion, but it's going to include a sift from the tight end. So some would argue that this is actually a weak side play because when the tight end cross sifts here, there's no three man surface, but I wanted to include it anyway. You can see the count is a box plus one. So what they're really anticipating here, as you can see with the arrows, is when the tight end comes across to sift the backside defensive line, 
the front is going to adjust and they're going to fall back in their fits because when the tight end comes across, that changes the blocking surface that the defense needs to account for. If the defense doesn't adjust, they're going to have two players outside and when the running back inevitably cuts back somewhere, they're going to be outgapped. So there's the anticipation here that the strong safety is going to fall in. So that's who they're going to combo to. The center is going to combo to. Again, he's not working to the backside linebacker like we've talked about. So this would kind of be a, a push idea. So instead of including all that in the play call, uh, it's just Hornet. And you can see it goes along with Wasp. Wasp is a, a weak side version. We'll break that down in another video where we talk about weak side outside zone variations. Uh, just looking at strong side ones today. But again, what Hornet is, we've got a balanced formation. There's going to end up being two receivers over on the back side, whether it's they line up that way, whether we get to two through some fly motion, it's Delta because he's going away from the play. We're getting two receivers on the back side, finishing with a single receiver on the play side and the Y sifting across. As a result of the sift, the offensive line, the blocking surface, expecting the defenders, the second level defenders to fall back. And all of that is really connotations that come along with a Hornet play call. Lastly, let's take a look at some jet sweeps that really get uh, some other players involved outside of the running back. First, we have dead Zorro Cat. So the defense is being blocked exactly as we would Zorro Cat. You can see we've got our quad here. Cat means that's going to the corner. Z is going to crack the strong safety offensive line blocking just like it was Zorro. I will see dead again on the next play. I assume that it means that the running back is dead, that the ball's not going to him. So he's blocking now, but this is one way of blocking for a jet sweep here, especially if we have uh, some rotation. But this is different than how jet sweeps are normally run in this offense. Normally the quarterback's under center and the jet sweep is going to go away from the play because it's kind of a constraint for when the defense stops responding to the motion but here they're actually blocking for the sweep. So dead Zorro cat is going to give that sweep runner uh, essentially a Zorro type of blocking surface. The other way for a jet sweep to be run and still be blocked for would be Deadpool. So again, dead running back is going to block and this is essentially going to be jet sweep with force blocking and the running back blocking the force defender. So based on the fronts, like we kind of mentioned earlier, as we talked about those plays, when you might want to run Zorro versus when you might want to run Force, that would really kind of dictate which version of this jet sweep you would want to use. So here we have an end inside. So kind of like with Force, ideally we can talk about getting everything sealed in. And then because he's pressed, the Z is actually going to run off the corner here. And then you really just have the running back one on one with a strong safety and your X with the ball. But really, if the front is aligned to the point where you can seal them in without the help of the running back and the tight end and the rest of the offensive line can really just work to pin everything in and get the running back one on one with a strong safety, Deadpool would be the call. If they're going to fight for contain, then you're going to want to run Dead Zorro Cat so the tight end can really get that edge defender widened. He can get the running back's help comboing to the corner and then the outside receiver coming in to crack that safety in the hole to really create a lane for the jet sweep. So those are the primary strong side outside zone runs in the Shanahan McVay system. We mostly looked at versions from the 2023 Dolphins with a few versions of the 2029 49ers plays in there as well. If you want access to both of those things and more, you can sign up to join my Substack Wide Zone Warriors down in the link below. You'll get access to my Google Drive that has a ton of playbooks from the Shanahan system in there and every week receive some play breakdowns with the film from teams that run this system in the NFL. If you'd like to see another video where I break down some of their plays in the playbook, click on the screen and watch this next video.